This is the realm of contemporary naval vessels. Enormous ships now control the vast oceans, each acting as evidence of a country's advanced technology and military strength. However, shipbuilding not only encompasses sheer scale, but also achieves unparalleled levels of accomplishment. Now we examine how sophisticated technologies, state-of-the-art materials, and improved weaponry are integrated to enhance the capabilities of these nautical wonders to withstand various missions. To what extent can we push the boundaries of these advancements? Join us as we explore the treacherous waters aboard the world's most perilous warship, the United States Naval Institute formally designated the Izumo-class destroyers as helicopter-carrying destroyers. DDH, but Jane's battleships classified them as helicopter carriers. The Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force's largest surface combatants are the successors to the Hayuga-class helicopter destroyers. The Japanese Ministry of Defense unveiled the creation of these destroyers on November 23, 2009 with a particular emphasis on countering submarines, along with their involvement in peacekeeping and disaster relief missions. The Izumo class possesses a diverse range of aircraft, capable of housing a maximum of 28 aircraft. Although originally equipped with a fleet of seven anti-submarine warfare helicopters and two search and rescue helicopters, the ships are also capable of accommodating up to 400 troops and transporting 53.5 ton trucks or similar equipment. Five helicopter landing spaces on the flight deck enable simultaneous landings and takeoffs. The system's defensive capabilities are made up of two phalanx close-in weapon systems and two rolling airframe missile systems. The Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force initially planned to use the Izumo-class destroyers as important replacements for the retired Chirane-class ships in fiscal year 2014. In 2010, Forecast International identified possible backing for fixed-wing aircraft, such as the Bell, Boeing V-22 Osprey, and Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning III. However, the lack of characteristics like a ski jump or catapult indicated a preference for helicopters. The introduction of JS Izumo on August 6, 2013 highlighted its main purpose of engaging in activities to counter submarines monitor border areas, and provide assistance in peacekeeping and disaster relief operations. Its striking similarity to an aircraft carrier triggered global attention and discussion surrounding its probable use for launching fighter jets. In December 2017, there were indications that Japan was contemplating making modifications to the Izumo class for F-35B operations. This decision received criticism from China. In February 2018, Japan declared its intention to acquire 40 F-35B aircraft, which subsequently received approval for modification. On December 18, 2018, Japan officially reclassified the vessels as multifunctional operational destroyers. JS Izumo began the conversion procedure in 2020 with the specific goal of improving the deck's ability to withstand high temperatures, as well as including power supply equipment to support F-35B operations. J.S. Izumo has planned a comprehensive renovation, including altering the bow shape to take place at the end of 2024. On September 13, 2023, two F-35B aircraft belonging to the U.S. Marine Corps successfully executed vertical landings and horizontal takeoffs from Jusumo, marking a significant milestone in aviation history. During the initial modification process, JS Kega underwent a test voyage, showcasing her carrier-like design with a rectangular bow shape and deck markings for aircraft operations. This represents a significant advancement in Japan's efforts to strengthen its air defense capabilities. In 2011, the IHA Marine United Shipyard in Yokohama began construction of the lead ship using a budget of $1.5 billion from the fiscal 2010 budget. This investment represents a substantial effort to improve Japan's maritime and anti-submarine warfare capabilities. The Pyotr Veliki is the fourth vessel of the Kirov-class battlecruisers in the Russian Navy. Yuri Andropov, the previous General Secretary of the Communist Party, inspired the ship's initial name. However, the dissolution of the Soviet Union later led to a change in its name. 
Western defense analysts frequently classify these ships as battle cruisers, however. Russia officially designates them as heavy nuclear missile cruisers. These vessels are recognized by Western defense analysts as the most substantial surface warships specifically designed for line-of-battle warfare. Pyotr Vileki, the leading vessel of the Northern Navy, holds a crucial position in Russia's maritime endeavors. Funding problems resulting from national economic challenges, both before and after the fall of the Soviet Union, delayed the construction of the battlecruiser. Pyotr Vileki initiated the building 12 years ago, but it took until 1998 to complete and commission it fully. The ship's renaming to Pyotr Veliki is a tribute to Peter the Great, a prominent figure in Russian history. Pyotr Veliki has always identified itself with the pennant numbers 183 and 99, underscoring its crucial role as a powerful asset in the Russian Navy. The Russian Navy currently operates 411 nuclear-powered cruisers from Project Orlan, with the Peter the Great serving as the primary vessel. Peter the Great measures 823 feet in length. While the other three cruisers are now inoperable, Admiral Nakamov is undergoing maintenance and modernization with scheduled sea trials in 2023. Pyotr Vileki's main objective in combat is to annihilate enemy aircraft carrier vessels. Two, three type nuclear reactors, each with a capacity of 300 M, W, and 270,000 horsepower turbines, power the cruiser. The cruiser also boasts four power plants, four steam turbine generators, and four gas turbine generators. A crew of 1,035 personnel and 600 missiles equip the cruiser. The LHD WASP-class amphibious assault vessels were engineered by the United States to deploy American forces into hostile territories. Since 1989, seven out of the eight ships of this kind have been operational. On July 12, 2020, the Bonham Richard LHD-6 ship experienced a fire incident, resulting in substantial damage to 11 of the 14 decks. In December 2020, officials declared that there were no intentions to refurbish the ship due to the projected expenses and the lengthy duration of repairs, estimated to take five to seven years. The WASP has a length of 843 feet and can accommodate approximately 2,000 naval personnel, as well as over 40 ships with military aviation capabilities. Throughout different periods, these amphibious assault ships have functioned as powerful instruments of warfare, making a lasting impact on global history. The America class is a type of amphibious assault ship in the United States Navy, previously referred to as the Lair class. In 2014, the United States Navy commissioned these vessels specifically to transport marine expeditionary units using helicopters and MV-22B Osprey short takeoff and landing transport aircraft. A V-8B Harrier II, or F-35 Lightning short takeoff and landing aircraft, along with various attack helicopters, provides support to these vessels. The intention is for these vessels to take the place of the USS Palilio, belonging to the Tarawa class. The USS Macon Island Blueprint serves as the basis for the America class, which consists of a maximum of 11 intended vessels. However, it eliminates well decks in order to allocate additional room for aviation-related activities. Although their primary concentration is on helicopters and VTOL aircraft, these ships with a displacement of approximately 45,000 long tons, are comparable in size to the French Charles de Gaulle and the Indian Vikramaditya fixed-wing aircraft carriers. Although the former U.S. Navy Midway-class carriers are longer than them, they have a comparable displacement. They serve as miniature aircraft carriers. American-class vessels have the capacity to house around 20 to 25 AOBs, 8B or F-35B planes, or a mixture of both. Upcoming ships, beginning with USS Bougainville and LHA-8, will have reduced aircraft hangars in order to accommodate larger amphibious warfare well decks. The USS Macon Island adapted the hybrid electric system known as Codlog for the America-class ships. These ships use gas turbines for high speeds and switch to diesel-electric engines as necessary. This simplifies the process of storing and distributing fuel. 
The standard aircraft complement consists of MV-22B Osprey transports, FFEF-35B Lightning aircraft, 2SOVL multi-role jet aircraft, CH-53K heavy transport helicopters, AHAHH HN1Z U1Y attack or utility helicopters, and Navy Mage 60 cs Nighthawks for Air Sea Rescue. In order to counteract the dangers posed by anti-ship missiles, the U.S. Marine Corps intends to maintain amphibious vessels at a greater distance from the beach. The American class, which has doubled the displacement of the decommissioned Iwo Jima class amphibious assault ships, may handle larger and longer range MV-22 VSTOL aircraft. The LHX was a late 1990 ES proposal to replace the Tarawa class amphibious assault ships. The plan was for the LHX to develop into a concept for a future amphibious assault ship, possibly featuring a spacious deck and a smaller island superstructure. In 2014, the U.S. Navy began making alterations to the USS America in order to mitigate the detrimental effects of the intense heat generated by the F-35B and MV-22. In order to retain combat capability, the U.S. Navy is implementing cost-effective ways to extend the flight deck's lifespan on the America-class Sao Paulo Clement-class aircraft carrier. Future ships will apply the lessons learned from this process. The Ney Sao Paulo, a 12 first designated as the FOC, was a Clement-class aircraft carrier that operated in the Brazilian Navy. The acquisition took place in 2000, and subsequently, it assumed the role of the primary vessel in the Brazilian Navy. Frequent serviceability issues hindered the system's operational capabilities, leading to difficulties during its service. In 2017, the Brazilian Navy declared Sao Paulo demobilized and deactivated. The Brazilian Navy disposed of the carrier by selling her for dismantling on March 12, 2021. Turkey declined to dock, leading the Brazilian Navy to intentionally sink the ship in the deep waters of the Atlantic Ocean on February 3, 2023, near the Brazilian coast. From 2005 to 2010, Sao Paulo underwent significant modernization, including the examination and restoration of steam turbines, the upkeep of surface condensers, the replacement of boiler tubes, and other improvements. Notwithstanding these endeavors, the carrier encountered persistent obstacles that restricted its operational efficiency. As part of the modernization initiative, Embraer upgraded 12 Brazilian Navy aircraft and four Skyhawks, improving their avionics radar systems, ELTA 2032 radar power production, and autonomous oxygen generating systems. Embraer has also installed additional armaments, such as MAA-1B, Python 4, and Derby AMs on the updated aircraft. We hired Marsh Aviation to modify four S2 turbo trackers for airborne early warning purposes, as well as a further four for tanking and carrier onboard delivery tasks. We acquired extra airframes, specifically former Australian and former Uruguayan C1 Trader airframes, with the intention of converting them into a AEW planes and tanker aircraft. The objective was to substitute the existing fleet of three SH helicopters in Sao Paulo with six S-70 BC Hawk helicopters. The aircraft carrier's dimensions were 869 feet long and 167 feet wide, with a total displacement of 32,780 tons and a crew complement of 1,338 people. The French Navy commissioned the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle in 2001. Charles de Gaulle is a nuclear-powered surface vessel that serves as the flagship of the French Navy. It was named after the French president, General Charles de Gaulle. The French Navy has successfully constructed the sole nuclear-powered aircraft carrier that exists outside of the United States Navy. A fleet of Dassault Rafale M and E2 Sea Hawkeye aircraft 365 F Dauphin Pedro, EC-725 Caracal, and 532 Cougar helicopters equipped the ship. It is capable of carrying out a range of duties, including combat operations, search missions, and rescue operations. The carrier functions as a catabar-type carrier. 
equipped with 2,246-foot C-133 steam catapults that resemble the ones found on U.S. Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. Significant difficulties emerged during the sea testing in 1999, leading to the need to enlarge the flight deck to accommodate E and C Hawkeye operations. Although there was unfavorable press, the prolongation constituted a relatively minor portion of the overall project budget. The sea trials encountered challenges, such as a combustion mishap during a nuclear reactor trial in 2000 and a broken propeller in the last sea trial later that year. Between 2005 and 2010, Charles de Gaulle had a comprehensive modernization process that involved resolving existing problems and modernizing several systems. The refit encompassed the installation of new propellers, aircraft maintenance enhancements, and improved weapons storage facilities. The carrier underwent significant refueling and upgrading operations from September 2007 to December 2008. In March 2009, the carrier received further repairs in Tula. In October 2010, a malfunction in the electrical system abruptly ended a four-month trip. A midlife upgrade and overhaul commenced in February 2017, lasting 18 months. This comprehensive process involved nuclear reactor refueling, normal maintenance, and the modernization of the combat system. Charles de Gaulle resumed operations in September 2018 after its refurbishment was completed. The French naval forces possess a single nuclear aircraft carrier named Charles de Gaulle, capable of housing a maximum of 40 aircraft, primarily Rafale M fighters. The carrier measures 857 feet long and 211 feet wide. The vessel has a combined displacement of 42,000 tons. Although larger American carriers have exceeded their fighting capabilities, Charles de Gaulle has continuously demonstrated combat effectiveness. The Kiev class, also known as Project 1143 Crescent, was the first class of fixed-wing aircraft carriers or heavy aviation cruisers built in the Soviet Union for the Soviet Navy. The development of these carriers commenced in 1970 with the construction of the lead ship Kiev, which was based on the project's initial concept. Originally designed as a carrier with a full deck, these carriers were finally selected for their apparent cost efficiency. They have some notable features, such as a spacious island superstructure on the right side and an inclined flight deck that spans two-thirds of the entire deck length. Equipped with formidable surface-to-air and surface-to-surface -surface missile weaponry on the front deck, they successfully traversed the Turkish Straits. According to the Montreux Convention, the primary objective of the Kiev class was to provide assistance to strategic missile submarines, surface ships, and naval aviation by engaging in anti-aircraft, anti-submarine, and surface warfare. The Soviet Union built a total of four carriers, selling the first two to China for conversion into museums. In 2004, the Indian Navy acquired Admiral Gorshkov, the fourth aircraft carrier, following substantial alterations, and decommissioned the third ship. Currently, it functions as INS Vikramadisha. The Kiev-class carriers need a power plant with eight turbo-pressurized boilers, four steam turbines, and four shafts. The carriers possess a total length of either 896 feet or 928 feet. The Baku subgroup's flight deck dimensions are 174 feet in width and 107 feet in beam. When operating at maximum capacity, the displacement of these vessels varies between 43,000 and 45,500 metric tons, and they are capable of reaching a speed of 32 knots. The air wing can consist of 2630 aircraft, which may include Yak-38, short takeoff and landing, as well as Sia-25, Sia-27, or 29 helicopters. The crew capacity varies between 1,200 and 1,600 individuals. The armament configurations differ, but typically consist of missile launchers, surface-to-air missile, SAM launchers, anti-aircraft, AA cannons, close-in weapon system, CIWS torpedo tubes, and anti-submarine rocket launchers. In 1975, they commissioned the Kiev class as the lead ship. The subsequent evolution of the class, exemplified by Admiral Kuznetsov and other vessels, 
expanded the range of capabilities and outcomes for these aircraft-carrying cruisers. The Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, consisting of 10 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers currently in use by the United States Navy, represents the highest level of naval strength. These carriers, known as Nimitz-class carriers, are currently the largest and most powerful warships in operation. They are named after Fleet Admiral Chester W. Nimitz. The fleet commissioned the USS Nimitz as its first ship on May 3, 1975, and the USS George H. W. Bush as its last ship on January 10, 2009. The Nimitz class is characterized by its impressive specifications, such as a total length of 1,092 feet, a full load displacement of nearly 100,000 long tons, and the presence of two 4-watt pressurized water reactors that enable nuclear propulsion. These carriers have a top speed above 30 knots and a maximum power output of around 260,000 shaft horsepower. They are capable of operating continuously for more than 20 years without needing to refuel, which contributes to their service life of over 50 years. The Nimitz-class carriers, built by Newport News Shipbuilding Company in Virginia, have demonstrated their capabilities in a range of wars, including Operation Eagle Claw, the Gulf War, and operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. For aircraft operations, the carriers employ a catapult-assisted takeoff barrier rest recovery system on angled flight decks, which consists of steam catapults and arrestor wires. This design enables expedited deployment and retrieval, accommodating a varied air fleet that normally consists of approximately 64 aircraft. The FA-18E and FA-18F Super Hornets serve as the main aircraft for conducting offensive attacks. The unit cost is approximately 8.5 billion US dollars. In fiscal year 2012, the Nimitz class carriers had a cost of several billion dollars. While each ship may have slight differences, they generally have a crew of around 3,000 to 3,200 individuals, with 1,500 in the air wing and 500 in other positions. Two or four W nuclear reactors power the carriers which also carry short-range defensive weapons like the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow or RIM-162 Advanced Sea Sparrow missile launchers, along with the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System. The U.S. government has a policy of neither confirming nor denying the presence of nuclear weapons on board. Additional warships accompany the Nimitz-class carriers that are part of a carrier strike group for the purpose of safeguarding against potential dangers like submarines, Refueling and major overhauls implement modifications and improvements to resolve design variances and ensure that older carriers meet the standards of more recent ones as powerful and flexible assets. The Nimitz-class carriers have made substantial contributions. S. For nearly four decades, the U.S. Navy has demonstrated its power and capabilities on a global scale through its operations. The Gerald R.R. Ford-class carriers are gradually supplanting the Nimitz-class carriers, thereby maintaining the U.S. Navy's supremacy in naval aviation. BVT Surface Fleet, currently known as BA Systems Maritime Naval Ship, has developed the UXV Combatant, an advanced unmanned aerial vehicle carrier with the goal of transforming naval capabilities. In 2007, BVT Surface Fleet, which is now known as BA Systems Maritime Navy Ship, introduced the UXV Combatant, an advanced warship with the ability to deploy, operate, and retrieve numerous small unmanned vehicles for long durations. The UXV Combatant functions as a mothership, serving as a permanent base and control center for various unmanned land, sea, and air vehicles. The UXV Combatant incorporates design aspects from the Type 45 destroyer and the interdiction assault ship concept. It features two angled flight decks grouped in a V-shape, with each deck measuring around 164 feet in length. The strategic design of the flight decks enables the launch of unmanned aerial vehicles, V-stool aircraft, and helicopters. We anticipate that the warship will employ advanced launch devices like the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System or a towering skyscraper to launch planes. The UXV Combatant is highly versatile and capable of doing underwater missions, such as launching unmanned underwater vehicles through a moon pool.
Additionally, it has the ability to function as an assault ship, providing ample space for a significant number of soldiers and their gear, specifically for naval gunfire support. A 155mm gun, capable of firing quick bursts of up to 20 rounds, equips the battleship. Additionally, it features a vertical launching system designed to especially handle the issues presented by asymmetric warfare. The UXV combatant is highly proficient in sending assault soldiers or special forces to the shore, offering crucial firepower assistance. This involves employing a 155mm artillery piece, firing land attack cruise missiles from its vertical launching mechanism, and deploying a group of unmanned combat flying vehicles. The UXV combatant possesses advanced ship-borne sensors and unmanned aerial vehicles for surveillance missions, enhancing its offensive capabilities. BIA systems designed the warship to function autonomously and as a protective vessel, demonstrating its ability to adjust and respond to a variety of mission needs. BIA systems sees the UXV combatant as a revolutionary naval asset that embodies the future of naval warfare. The UXV combatant's unique design specifically enhances the capabilities of unmanned systems. Thank you for viewing. Before you depart, kindly click the link on your screen to view another one of our captivating videos. See you there!